So there's a lollipop. Whoever can get, guess how far that is. <laughs> What's that? 25 miles. You're closer. 29. So when you get the test, that's the answer you want to put on it. 29 miles. Right. So you're going to have to be pretty close to a, a shoreline, an island, our sister ship. That Hangar deck, flight deck. Those were here. So that's the three ways we navigate. All right, what's, what, else, what else down here is pretty interesting? What's that brass thing with the turning handle? Okay, that that works with these. These are sound power headsets. Can you make an announcement, please, for a 1 o'clock tour of the island structure? So, these are, uh, these amp operate like tin cans on a string, playground stuff, uh, earmuffs, mouthpiece that hangs down. Uh, because the mouthpiece, the only thing mouthpiece is far as far as a stop the wind on is the problem with it. Otherwise, you don't need it. If you had a, you know, a mic, blue mic or something like this, you used to do it. So they need no electricity. Uh, they, you plug into circuits like these. These are the circuits you plug into. And that's, and this is a channel changer for some of the circuits, right? Yeah, it's just the plug just comes off and they plug in there. So they, these are used uh, uh, throughout the ship, even modern day, we have the same system. Because it's, uh, it's foolproof. Uh, the sound of your voice generates all the current you need to talk to is ever plugged into this thing. During flight operations, there'll be upwards of 60 people on this. Mostly listening. Anybody guess what this is? Oh, that's to send tubes up yeah, and down. That's right. <laughs> pneumatic, it's pneumatic delivery. So this goes to the radio room and back from the radio room. The radio room has about 10 of these, and they dispatch it to Irish address. Do you guys remember these at the banks in the old days? They'd put the little tubes in. <laughs> okay, you little guys, you know what this is? See this? You know what that is? You don't? It's, uh, it's this. Huh? <laughs> it's a very early version. <laughs> yeah. I, that's the I, iPhone 1. That's what that is. Right there. There's a lot. It's over here. He's from the navigation bridge. And he's doing a ship's log. And here's a typical ship's log. This is a log from the day they, the time they picked up the astronauts in Apollo 11. This guy's steering the ship. This guy's operating the engine order telegraph system. The boatswain's made of the watch is standing right over there, and he's the crew boss. And if the captain's on the bridge, his marine sentry's up here too. So it'll be five people up here. This guy is relate is taking care of uh, uh, any announcements that the boatswain whistle, okay, and any lighting and any emergencies that they're going to set off. So, have you guys been to the engine room? Not yet. Not yet. You got to go. Um, you got time? Time, time permitting. Okay, this is what you're going to see. Does, it, does anybody still think these are gas pedals or throttles? Nope. They're not. Okay. There's no direct, direct connection between this and the engines. It's That's just right. telling the engine room. It's telling the engine want. room is yeah. telling this guy what speed you want. Yeah. So when you move these back and forth, you're ringing these two bells, okay? And then you're moving the big needle that's inside those two gates. How many engines are on the ship? Four. Okay, two starboard and two port. 150,000 horsepower is the max. There's 3750 each, roughly. Okay. So when when this guy hears that, this is the throttle. When he hears the bells, he looks up and he sees that the needles now are they're not on top of one another anymore. He knows you want to change speed, then twist that knob, he'll match the needles again. And when he does, the needle, the little needle inside here will match what he's selected on the big needle and the bell down here. That lets you know he got the right. message. That's it. Now, you can talk to these guys, too, but this is the way they do it. Because uh, you know how communications can get guarded, right? Right. All right. Whistles? Battle lantern. The flashlight. So when it's powered, it's off. Put those little, you want to put those in the rack over there? You'll, you'll see it. So the, this is this is the emergency brake. Oh, okay. <laughs> it stops the boat in 50 feet flat. Right, yeah. The surface collision alarm. Yeah. 
the whole ship. Well, no, because he has uh, the captain and the admiral both have what's called in port quarters, and they're on the L1 level. That's right below the flight deck. This is where he, when the ships would see, this is where he would be. Though. Is that the real? Is that a real piece of writing? That the letter that was from yes. the Apollo pickup. Yeah, we yeah. liked that. Right, yeah. You know, girls would like that. Sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is where the captain would obviously sleep. Yeah, this is where he would be. He's up here all the time. The ships and seas. Yeah. He's got to be up here. On average, how long is a ship at sea? I mean, like, what was the longest it's been? Six to nine months okay. would be a normal cruise. Wow. That's, so that's interesting. A long time. Like, it's, it's like mind blowing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, See all that right below the top. We, uh, we actually are trying to make a two o'clock show out of the Chabot oh. Museum. So we actually have to start weaving. Are you from the area? No, oh, I'm from yeah. Los Angeles. Oh, you are. Okay. And the twins live here in San Francisco. Okay. Denon's in Chico. And we wanted to do that and this. One o'clock right now. Ten, yeah. well, ten, ten till. So ten. we've got about ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah. All right, let's go see okay. the bridge real quick then. Great. All right. That's where the captain would sit when they're doing underway your time. Take on supplies. Okay. Now, why have uh, you've got the steel guarding, you know, the pilot house and all these ports that open and close? Why, why all this full of blue? Because this was the outside of the ship when it was built. Oh, this wasn't here. Oh, right. okay. Wow. Well, this has been so much fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Me. It's been a wonderful tour. I definitely have to come back. I've got a whole day uh, to see <laughs> oh, yeah. the ship. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you just saw the hangar deck in here, that's too bad. And then that's a cool place to see. There's a lot of other interesting stuff to see. You have no this in there. No? It's no, actually great. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> What's the bucket? Yeah. Is there is there still a pretty? I know yeah, that's that a water kept in water drips. So. In the in the past, you know, everyone in the military was smoking, right? Smoking uh, coffee, cigarettes and coffee. Right. Is yeah. that is there still a big culture of smoking yeah, cigarettes? I don't think general, there's cigarettes. I don't know about it's smoking. Well. I'm yeah. sure it's very much still there. We get one in the, the plane and drink coffee all the time, uh, but no smoking anymore. Right. Yeah, I don't know if, if they can smoke on the ship or not. I'm sure they can in certain spots. There ought to be designated right. areas. Yeah. All right. Well, we got to okay. figure out how to get back to our car. All right. Um, Let's go down this way. Okay. And so what are the meaningful differences for the Admiral's Bridge versus the... Well, he's to, he has a, all his gauges say what the ship's doing, but that, that's not his responsibility. He's in, he's in charge of the, uh, the fleet. The fleet, right, yeah. Well, you guys... Are they on our crew with us? Mm. What are you bang. guys doing up here by yourself? Come on in here. I, I guess that, that that's no, not like... that's oh. a different group. Yeah, well, they're not supposed to be up here by themselves. Yeah. You guys got to come in here. Come on, you all. So was the admiral typically on the aircraft carrier? There was always almost an admiral on here all the time. Right? Yeah, you, you're not supposed to be up here by yourself. Did you come, just come up the stairs by yourself? Yeah. You're, no, you're not supposed to be there. Just, just, just stick with me. We'll be oh, okay. Right, yeah. Okay, then, yeah. You put on top of the top. So, this is, this is a typical task force here where the Hornet was the uh, flagship. Got it. Right. And there was another Essex class carrier there. Two escort carriers, you get four major battleships, and then this this was the invasion of Okinawa. One one of the task forces. Wow. Yeah. How many ships would be in a task force? There, like you how you many... see them right there, that's an actual task force. Really? Yeah. yeah. Like that, and that's the formation a task yeah. force right. runs in. Right, yeah. And the idea is that you're protecting this one. You're protecting from... the carriers from uh, right. everything else. Yeah. They've got to get through everyone right, yeah. else. But uh, this this since this was an invasion, you got battleships. Wow. So this ship participated in the invasion of Okinawa. Okinawa, right, yeah. Right, yeah. Tom went on vacation to Okinawa. <laughs> I was, 
Every trip I had in the Navy, well, when I was in the C-130 squad, and we opened, uh, Okinawa was one of those fuel stops. Yeah, oh, yeah. stopped there. Right? And so uh, the task force is different from a battle group. Right. The that, task force this, is much larger. Much larger and more closer together. You can see these guys. That's why we had that emergency break. Uh, battle, <laughs> battle group, the carrier pretty much protects itself because it's got the E-2C Hawk on the F-18s. And these guys don't. They don't see each other. They could be 50 miles apart, still being the same, but they don't. They don't bunch up. The cruiser, the frigate, the right. destroyer, they're, just, they're way out there. Really? Right. right. Yeah. They don't. They don't bunch up. Uh, and this is this is what the Essex class carrier looks like. You got it's about two acres on the flight deck and just shy. Oh, so yeah, this is 4, the 30 percent larger. Right. Holy that's the Nimitz class cow. carrier. And that's that's the that's the nukes. So they're uh, they got uh, four and a half acres on the flight deck. And just shy of 4,000 men. So. They could be an aircraft carrier. Right. Yeah. Did you see right. the picture? <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. You lay one inside the So this steam turbine, powered by steam turbine, powered by steam turbines. Wow. The water seeded with oil. The water seeded with a nuclear engine. Amazing. Yeah, I remember when my dad These guys would refuel every five or six days. This guy doesn't have to refuel for 25 years. <laughs> well, I remember being so... Um, uh, tickled when my dad explained to me how nuclear power worked and he said yeah so the, the nuclear engine isn't actually doing anything but heating steam it's just a really efficient way to heat steam you guys gotta go yeah okay let's go I'm sorry it's all right okay. no, thank you we're so enjoying this yeah this is, this is, this is, this is yeah down two laps Thanks, Tony. Uh -huh. Amazing tour. Are you here all the time? Saturdays. Saturdays? Right, yeah. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank <laughs> you. 